up on us. They're saying Andy Cruz is the GOAT. Um, very good at winning three-round fights, but I have to say, like, I people who are much smarter than me are all in on Andy Cruz. To me, there is just I'm feeling that Julio LaCruz feeling where I just feel like he's going to walk into a shot because he has he gets away with things, in my opinion, based on athleticism, confidence. He does maneuvers. He pulls back. I don't really see I see his style working good in the amateurs. I do not see it going well in the pros. I think inevitably he's going to fight Shakur Stevenson as a pro, like in three fights, like he'll turn pro. But I what am I missing on the Andy Cruz experience? Because I feel like I, so many people like him. I'm missing something. I, I don't think he's as hittable as you. I don't think he's as hittable as, as La Cruz is. And, and we've seen La Cruz be tagged and he does the crazy lean backs and, you know, what the difference is to me between the two of them is is Andy Cruz. Um, he'll mix his defence and the attacking so well together that he'll go to lean back and he'll come back with a punch. Whereas La Cruz will too often lean back and and it will he'll lean back and just keep leaning back and and at some point that's the floor. Um, I, the thing is, I I don't think he ever turns pro. I, I I just think he remains amateur forever. I just. This is, you know, this is what the Cubans do, right? This is what La Cruz has done. This is what um, Arlen Lopez seems to have done. Um, what's the other one? Iglesias. They're, this is what they do. They, they, they're they more than happy to, you know, win the amateur tournaments, clean up. And it's, it's rare that they go pro. And when they do, you know, the majority of them, I, I'd say, given their amateur success, they tend to underachieve. And, you know, that you can point to various reasons behind that. Um, but I think the the vast majority of Cubans don't don't match their success in in the pro game as they do the amateur game, and I wonder if that's a factor as as to why most of them don't seem that bothered about turning over. Um, I, I... Oh shoot, I I was a rude host, but you got me thinking about something. So whenever I watch Usyk, I always think about offense to defense, defense to offense. Basically, mm -hmm. what you're saying, the greatness of Andy Cruz is. He's disguising that elite trait of turning offense to defense, defense to offense, because I'm looking at his feet. He's doing all this weird stuff, and he disguises his ability to go between the two because I'm looking at other stuff. I, that, that's how I see it. That's what, to me, is the difference between him and LaCruz. LaCruz is either defending or an offense, and, and you can point to him, you know, being great at either of those, you can say, oh, he's, he's brilliant when he goes forward, or he's brilliant when he, you know, decides to avoid all these shots of his head movement. But Cruz, Cruz, Cruz will stand there. He'll, you know, do it all. He'll, he'll move the head, miss six shots, and then he'll apply with a combination, um, which I don't think Cruz, tend, uh, I don't think Le Cruz, <laughs> just to make this really confusing, I don't think he tends to do. I, I think he's defence or offence, and I think Andy Cruz has, has the ability to seamlessly mix them together. And I, I think that's, I think the biggest danger to Cruz was, was Keyshawn Davis. And I think we'll eventually realise that Keyshawn Davis is so incredibly incredibly talented that the fact that Cruz beat him and you know didn't really you never in that fight for oh my god he's, he's in massive trouble here um I think that shows just how great Andy Cruz is because I think Keyshawn Davis is special well Cruz to me reminds me a bit of Lomachenko but without anything that was impressive of Lomachenko like that's the way I watch him is like he does the things I remember when Loma was an amateur but I don't feel excited watching it it's like oh yeah he's about to stop this guy he's turning him putting his punches together I just don't fully care and I don't I don't know if that's just I have a bias against Cubans because they never really go anywhere or what it is but that's my feeling when I watch Cruz I think I, I think it could well be that. And I, I think that is part of it because I think you watch and you kind of go, uh, yeah, but how would he do as a pro? And I, I think that's, you know, not that it's a bad thing to do. I think because we all do it, we all sit there and go, well, how, how would this happen if he was a professional? But I think if you watch it as that with the Cubans, you struggle because I don't think anyone who, who boxes in that really Cuban textbook style has ever really experienced success. I mean, you know, Never. the Cubans, yeah, so I think that if you watch it in that frame of reference as how would this guy do as a professional, I think it's really tough um, because I, I just I just think, like you say, that it, it's never happened. Why would it ever happen? Whereas if you watch it as 
oh my guys oh my god these guys are you know the free round they're geniuses for free rounds and, and they perfect this style of fighting in the amateur sense you know i i think it's a difference i one of my main actual takeaways from this tournament was was how dominant the cuban system is at the moment in terms of you know half of these cuban guys were, were guys that hadn't entered tournaments before um like you Yonis Hernandez, I think I'm pronouncing that right, uh, and got, they got medal. Perfect. I, yeah, I do my best. I do my best. And uh, the, uh, a number of other Cubans who, who no longer fight under the Cuban banner are also doing well. Lauren Alfonso Dominguez, who's you know Azerbaijani apparently. The, the Cubans, it seemed like they were constantly meddling, whether it was for Cuba or someone else. And, and to me, that was one of the great takeaways. Whereas you know, a country like um, the Team GB. We don't seem to have the second fighters. Cuba, in some cases, have the second and the third. I mean, Kevin Haler Brown's another that you know has never, pretty much never, ascended to the top because he couldn't get past Andy Cruz or Iglesias. But here he comes out, and he, he, I don't think he actually won a medal. I think he lost in the quarterfinal. But you know, th their strength in depth seems to be a lot more than than Team GB and some of the other um, nations. Even you know, Uzbekistan, who've always done well recently, it seems like they've fallen off and. Yeah, that was one of my main takeaways, how impressive Cuba are in just in terms of this amateur boxing scene. And, you know, make of that what you will. I don't think they will be good pros. <laughs> you know, they've got a track record for not being good pros. Well, next guy I want to talk about is Raheem Gonzalez. He had a really hard finals fight. He beat Serbia in the quarterfinal or the semifinal, which the whole crowd booed him. The fight was in Serbia. He wins, he gets booed. And then in the finals, What's up everybody, it's your good friend Lukey and I appreciate you watching this video. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a comment with suggestions, which is the reason you're seeing this video, and also if this is just a single video and you're saying where's the full interview, look at the upper left hand corner and you can find the full interview or check in our video section. We're rapidly trying to improve this channel and it takes support from not just myself, but also people that enjoy the channel to keep me motivated and try to give you the best boxing content. Be sure to go to itrboxing.com for all of your boxing needs. This is Luke.